Throughout the early 1960s, Toho, interested in the Frankenstein character, made numerous attempts to make a film reimagining of their own. Initially, the studio was interested in having Frankenstein fight King Kong, but the project was scrapped in favor of having Kong face Godzilla, resulting in the infamous King Kong vs. Godzilla in 1962. Plans were later set in motion to have Frankenstein fight Godzilla, but when the franchise continued in 1964 with Mothra vs. Godzilla, the script was altered to be a standalone film, with Godzilla Godzilla replaced with an original monster named Baragon. The first of three films to be co-produced with American distributor UPA and directed by Ishiro Honda, Frankenstein Conquers the World was finally released in 1965, a different, perhaps even underrated kaiju film with a smaller scale and a bigger heart. Near the end of World War II, Frankenstein's heart was taken and sent to Hiroshima to be experimented on, only to be seemingly destroyed when the U.S. drops an atomic bomb on the city. Fifteen years later, a feral boy is spotted throughout the city, and is eventually captured and taken in by scientists, who discover that he is immune to radiation. The boy, now realized to be Frankenstein, continues to grow until he breaks free, sending the city into a panic. At the same time, a mysterious dinosaur-like creature appears and begins terrorizing the countryside. The damage of which is blamed on Frankenstein. Believing him to be innocent, Frankenstein's caretakers take it upon themselves to find the boy, who just may be the hero Japan needs to save them from the monster, Baragon. <laughs> Frankenstein Conquers the World is, much like the titular character itself, a unique hybrid, taking many of the classical elements associated with the original Mary Shelley story and merging it with the elements of the kaiju genre that was popular in Japan at the time. This makes it one of the strangest movies you'll ever come across, which of course is what makes it stand out. But while many aspects of the film are a hoot to watch, it is bogged down by an overly simplistic story and a bland cast of characters that together make for a rather mixed overall experience. Part of the issue is that the plot here feels kind of undercooked, like much more could have been done with the concept. The beginning is actually the most intriguing part, opening up the possibility of a Nazi conspiracy that would have made for the kind of pulp storytelling few films have ever obtained. But that possibility is quickly and quite literally blown away before it can begin, making way for a fairly standard story of a misunderstood creature who can't find his place in society. The human characters certainly don't do the film any favors. While not terrible, they aren't good, making them fairly forgettable. This is saying a lot, because Frankenstein Conquers the World was actually the first time actors Nick Adams and Kumi Mizuno were on screen together, the other being, of course, Invasion of Astro Monster shortly after, but the chemistry between them here doesn't crackle nearly as much. A few other Toho stars make appearances as well, including Tadao Takashima, Yoshio Tsuchiya, and even the great Takashi Shimura, who makes a brief cameo at the beginning. It's just a shame none of them are given much to work with. The highlight of the film is Frankenstein himself. The design both disturbs and elicits sympathy, which is very true to the concept of the character. This effect is enhanced by the way he grows and mutates throughout the film, and the makeup used on Koji Furuhata, the actor who played Frankenstein, is very good. To his opposite is of course Baragon, who makes his cinematic introduction here, played by Godzilla himself, Haruo Nakajima. The climactic fight between them is faster and more kinetic than your standard brawl, thanks to Frankenstein's speed and agility. And like all good fights, is privy to a few great moments. The production is just as up to snuff as all of Honda's prior efforts. The smaller scale of the story and focus on more rural locations allows special effects director Ijai Tsuburaya to show off his craft and eye for attention to detail in really impressive ways. The same goes for Akira Ifukube, whose score is appropriately moody and eerie, and many tracks would go on to be reused in future Toho films. Some effects are less convincing, the most noticeable being a moment where Baragon eats a horse, but overall the film is up to the standards of its time. Thank <laughs> you. 
Frankenstein Conquers the World is one of the weirdest entries in Toho's filmography of kaiju films, and while this does make it one of the most memorable, it doesn't quite reach the heights of the studio's best at the time. While technically it's impressive, from a narrative standpoint, it's merely okay. Those looking for a more typical giant monster action or to have their itch for destruction scratched may be disappointed. If the characters were more interesting, this would be fine, but they are serviceable at best, leaving Frankenstein himself the only real standout of the film. Those looking for more classic Toho Golden Era action will probably feel right at home, but for everyone else, it just might be too odd and slow to bear. For more reviews and opinions on all things kaiju, subscribe and stay tuned to Up From The Depths.